Yeah, very briefly, I'll just uh, go through what I have to say. Okay. All right. So. To put it on the. Uh, yeah. 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 So. Uh, uh, what is mycosis has been uh, very uh, elegantly put forth and uh, by uncontrolled diabetes. Actually, previously we were uh, seeing this with patients who had uh, mostly diabetic ketoacidosis. And uh, prior to uh, COVID, most of our patients had uh, uncontrolled diabetes. The patients were admitted uh, with us. Uh, as Dr. Alok also mentioned, there has been made a notifiable disease. Uh, by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and a few states also have declared it as an epidemic. So just a simple uh, the epidemiology, when we compare the various uh, Western countries or say developed countries, the, the cases of population per million, we are far, far ahead of them, about 140 cases per million as compared to the other countries. And the uh, uh, this was a leading international fungal uh, education portal where the whole data about nuclear mycosis is generally collated. So the, it was over 10,000 cases except the Indian data. But when the Indian data was added, it uh, went down to 9.9 9, uh, lakh 10,000. So you could see what is the burden of nuclear mycosis that we are having. And these are the, uh, this was a multi-center study which has been published in 2019. So there were two centers from North India and two centers from Southern India. Just to highlight that the, the number of cases was higher of, of mycosis from the Northern part of India. And the difference was that uncontrolled diabetes was the major reason or the major risk factor for the higher number of cases from Northern India as well, and it was also associated with higher mortality as compared to the uh, cases which are seen from the southern part of India. Now, why diabetes and uh, diabetes is a factor, why does diabetics develop uh, more frequently? And well, COVID-19 also may cause uh, the problem. So diabetics as such are at a higher increased risk, at a higher risk of uh, developing COVID-19. And uh, they also are at a higher risk of developing a severe form of COVID-19. There are several uh, underlying factors because of uh, underlying inflammation in diabetes, whether procoagulant state, or they may have other comorbidities like uh, kidney involvement or other organ dysfunction. So this makes them more prone to develop COVID-19 infection as such, and also uh, increasing the severity of the infection. Now, with poor glycemic control and uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, they are more prone to develop mycosis. This is very well known in the past. But how COVID-19 leads to uh, development of mycosis? So one, because of uh, underlying diabetes or uncontrolled diabetes, increased use of steroid, which is uh, Dr. Anu has shown that a lot of these people have uh, history of using steroids, maybe higher dosages or long periods and more and more uh, patients are, uh, have, uh, are starting or the physicians are starting steroids at the very beginning. That is day one, a person is detected as COVID positive, may not have any symptoms or very mild symptoms. The prescription contains steroids. So about 0.5 milligram per kg of uh, equivalent of steroids. So that is, I think, uh, one of the major reasons. And uh, some other immunomodulated drugs like tocilizumab, tolizumab, although their usage of that has been less, but that also suppresses your immunity. So uh, these are the uh, few factors which may possibly be related to uh, the increase in mycosis with COVID-19. One, COVID-19 itself causes uh, immune suppression as uh, most of the patients develop lymphopenia and uh, neutrocyte to lymphocyte, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio has been uh, uh, said to be an important prognostic marker. And this immune suppression or the lymphopenia persists for quite some time. It's more severe and it is correlated with the severity, severity of this disease. And now poor, uh, prolonged, dose of, uh, prolonged use of uh, corticosteroids 
along with this inappropriate use of broad spectrum antibiotics. So it has also been seen that patients who are admitted or having a mild to moderate disease, starting of antibiotic therapy is a very common in the prescription. People as uh, the patients are started, even if they have mild symptoms, they are started with antibiotics, like say coamoxiclav or uh, macrolides. And even patients who are admitted with moderate symptoms, the higher antibiotics are started and they are being given for a very long time. So this also may be a risk factor. And another one which is not uh, well studied and uh, we don't have a data on that is the use of other antifungal drugs. So uh, other antifungal drugs like uh, voriconazole and uh, kinocandins, they are also frequently used in individuals who have uh, moderate to severe symptoms. So in that, this uh, use of other antifungals, because these uh, antifungals for econazole or tanocandins, they have not, they don't have any effect on mucor mycosis, on the mucor uh, fungus. So, so use of these antibiotics may be inappropriate or possibly may be, possibly I'm saying again, because we don't have any data on this, may be a risk factor for uh, developing a mucor. Now, uh, in this second wave, what we have seen that uh, the oxygen requirement, particularly the severe form of disease, patients having hypoxia and uh, requiring a lot of oxygen has been quite high. And uh, somewhere, because if you are but during oxygen delivery, one has to be very careful. The use of uh, clean tubings, clean masks, uh, the uh, sterile water for the humidifiers, all these are essential. But the, somewhere, somewhere I, I, I feel that there is a breakdown in this uh, in the uh, hygiene. So there may be contaminated oxygen uh, delivery devices or contaminated water, which is used in uh, humidifiers. So this is several times, maybe a practice that when the water bumps goes down in the humidifier, it just being topped, topped up a little bit and that's all. So contamination could be a possibility. What one thing which is also uh, being increasingly seen is that uh, prolonged use of uh, masks, like uh, we have seen many times people are uh, using the masks, cloth masks or surgical masks or even, or even the N95 masks, which visibly appear to be soiled or visibly appear to be dirty. So prolonged use of these masks, which, have, which possibly may be contaminated uh, with the fungus, may also be associated with increase in the incidence of uh, buccal mycosis. And this question that uh, industrial grade oxygen, this has been uh, going on in several uh, professional groups and uh, WhatsApp groups. So this question is there. We don't know because there is no systematic uh, data available on this as of now. But yes, a theoretical possibility, it may be there because medical oxygen has is, is pure and it is sterile. So utmost care has is taken while uh, uh, providing this uh, oxygen. But whereas the industrial oxygen, it is required for different processes. So the that being sterile is not a necessary step, whereas medical oxygen being sterile is necessary, absolutely. So if there had, if that kind of an oxygen, which might be contaminated with the spores of the fungus is used for uh, medical uh, purposes, theoretically, yes, it may be one, or one reason and that may put the patient at risk of developing this uh, infection. So when to suspect, so this is uh, very important. Like uh, these are the few the symptoms which uh, I think Dr. Alok has already shown in that infographic uh, material, which has been prepared by the Department of uh, ENT and for the patients as well as uh, for the physicians. So these are just uh, symptoms, earlier symptoms, which may help the person to uh, pick it up and uh, approach the physician or uh, the ENT specialist for a, a, a quick diagnosis. The additional important information is glycemic control. One has to always look at the, what is the glycemic control of the patient. This has to be overemphasized because uh, individuals who are not uh, 
having good control because several individuals uh, who are having mild to moderate disease are being treated at home they are being treated with corticosteroids as well and their blood sugar goes sky high while they are at home and uh, this probably will uh, put them at risk of developing this leukomycosis uh, so uh, current glycemic control is very important and what treatment has been received for covid 19 illness that is also important to uh, see whether this patient has received any immunosuppressive uh, treatment now diagnosis as mentioned i think biopsy is uh, the best the gold standard it gives the highest yield than the tissue swab swabs gives about 25% the biopsy about 70 to 80% micro direct microscopy and uh, tissue culture with the drug analysis pcr as uh, the question raised is uh, still not being used more uh, very frequently because uh, it's not uh, required as such other biomarkers it's important to look for that other biomarkers for other fungal infections such as beta d glucan uh, calactamandan this needs to be seen because to rule out other fungal infections because the other fungal infections like candida and uh, aspergillus these are the two infections which also are seen in the immunocompromised patients which are seen in patients with the uh, Uh, who are treated with steroids or who are treated with the uh, uh, immunomodulatory drugs like tocilizumab or other monoclonal antibodies so it's important to rule that out as well imaging yes uh, ccct it's easier to get as uh, dr thakkar mentioned and mri if it's possible to get well pulmonary uh, pulmonary involvement is something which uh, can mimic aspergillus as well as other infections so it just based on radiological appearance it may be difficult to judge that it is uh, most likely leukomycosis so in that situation a bronco alveolar lavage may be important so based general principles of the management uh, early suspicion and diagnosis strict blood glucose control that is again i would emphasize the most important uh, plan in treating uh, prevention as well as the treatment and the judicious uh, use of steroid now steroids uh, need to be used very judiciously only if it is required and at which stage i think that is very important at which stage of covid 19 steroids are being given like mostly mentioned that if uh, steroids if there is decrease in the oxygen saturation and persistence of high grade fever beyond about first week that situation that may be required and did at the initial uh, starting steroid at day 1 i don't think that's a good idea and uh, steroid should be tapered off as soon as at the earliest depending on the clinical response now water the fluid which is used will be used for humid in the humidifiers if, if, if the patients are at home oxygen therapy uh, i and i think with the uh either using a cylinder or oxygen concentrators this is very important uh, uh, step which needs to be seen so come management uh, surgical debridement is uh, very important to remove as much as uh, dead tissue or the diseased tissue is possible now we have been uh, using liposomal amputation uh, since quite some time uh the dose we start is usually 5 mg per kg per day and uh, maybe higher dose if there is also cerebral involvement we usually give it for about 3 to 6 weeks it comes out to roughly about say 7 to 8 grams as dr thakkar mentioned uh the thing, there is no fixed duration of the treatment used with liposomal amphotericin because uh, many times our patients which uh, most of these patients are uh, diabetic they have other uh, complications related to diabetes they may have renal involvement which precludes using the full dosages or they start developing kidney uh, involvement so sometimes the dose has to be reduced or it has to be withheld for a few days and again restarted so those kind of problems uh, keep on cropping up so i think there is no fixed duration maybe yes 3 to 6 weeks and uh, 
cumulative dose about uh, seven eight grams that uh, would be sufficient and of course the treatment needs to be monitored clinically as well as radiologically that it's not progressing because regression here takes a long time so aiming for a radiological regression probably may not happen so early but lack of progression is something very important uh, conventional hypotensin is not much uh, used these days osaconazole is the drug uh, which is uh, now it's available in uh, tablet forms as well previously it was available only in the syrup forms this is uh, usually uh, given after completion of the liposomal amphotericin and uh, as uh, this uh, to, as it is important to maintain adequate drug levels of this of osaconazole because to be the drug to be effective appropriate drug levels have to be maintained and that is why uh, it is usually the practice that uh, uh, osaconazole is overlapped with lip uh, liposomal amphotericin for about a period of 5 to 7 days and uh, once the drug levels uh, uh, trough levels more than 0.7 mg per liter are reached at that point amphotericin can be stopped and posaconazole uh, can be continued and another drug isavuconazole is also available now this can be an alternative uh, for uh, posaconazole but uh, for that there is no therapeutic drug monitoring required and uh, imaging may be repeated after about 4 uh, weeks or so and as i mentioned i think the, the control of blood glucose is most important so in this regard the uh, department of endocrinology of aims has uh, provided a, this infographic uh, guidance on the diagnosis and management of uh, hyperglycemia at uh, the covid care facilities and this is a document which is uh, freely available and it has also been the guideline which is accepted by the ministry of health and family welfare so this uh, can be uh, accepted by everybody so just to summarize that uh, <clears throat> this incident increasing incidence of mucormycosis has further complicated the second wave of this covid pandemic uncontrolled blood glucose most important uh, factor and increased the use or inju injudicious use of steroids probably Uh, is contributing to increased uh, number of mucor mycosis cases that we are seeing so early suspicion is most important diagnosis and surgical treatment and medical treatment is very important and uh, periodic clinical and radiological monitoring i think uh, what we say is prevention in this situation is much better than the cure because this so post surgery surgery can be very disfiguring for various patients which we have seen and uh, this can cause a significant impact on uh, their psyche and that i think they can have a really uh, problems uh, subsequently they may be cured of mucor mycosis but with that persistent disfigurement there may be problem they may have uh, uh, this problem uh, psychological problems subsequently which may persist for the rest of their life So I think that is uh, my last slide. Thank you. Happy to take your questions. Thank you, Naval. Uh, 